Today I'm going to show you the drag knife holder that I made for my Shapeoko CNC machine. It basically consists of a few machined plastic parts that bolt onto this piece of aluminum extrusion. So this end is what holds the drag knife and it's spring loaded so that the drag knife has some compliance if the, uh, the height's not consistent across the board. So this is the actual drag knife that I ordered. There's a button here to eject the blade so that it can be removed. And when you insert the blade, there's a magnet that holds it in place. And you adjust the height of the blade using this thumb screw. And there's a jam nut here to make sure that the adjustment doesn't change. And it's nice that you can change the blade without adjusting the height. I used some 2000 grit sandpaper to kind of smooth the 45 degree edge. It was causing the paper to tear and it was leaving scratches, so now it has more of a smoothed gliding surface. I can show you what the insides look like. And if you look closely, there's a bearing at the end to allow the, the blade to swivel. I machined the plastic holder with enough tolerance so that the blade would be a slip fit, but not wiggle. And the reason I chose this blade specifically was it had a long neck to reduce wiggling. On the back side of the holder, I have some T-slot nuts so that I can bolt it to the extrusion. And this spring gets installed. So let's go ahead and install this on the machine. We'll give it a little wiggle. Everything looks like it's pretty stout. It's really nice having the aluminum extrusion because it has slots for adjusting. And there's a lot of hardware that can bolt to it. If I get a laser cutter in the future, It'll be much easier to bolt to this extrusion than having to make more machine brackets. I'm using this grip pad and I sprayed some of this adhesive on the back of it to glue it onto the plywood. The grip pad has adhesive on the front that's similar to what you find on a post-it and it helps prevent the vinyl from sliding or tearing. Looking at a close-up, the cut quality looks really good. You can't really tell where the knife starts and stops. The cut looks continuous. I'm just using Carbide Create uh, with no other modifications, no other software. Here I'm cutting a rectangle around my text so that I can remove the background. And now I'm going to use some vinyl transfer tape to remove the letters from the sheet vinyl. Uh, it'll transfer to the tape, and then I'll use that to transfer the text onto the surface that I want the text to be permanently attached to. The transfer tape maintains alignment and spacing of all the letters and segments of the letters. I'm just going to roughly eyeball this one, but the transfer tape does have a grid printed on it so that you can get the alignment exactly right. The adhesive on the transfer tape is strong enough to peel the vinyl off its backer, but weak enough that it makes it easy to transfer the vinyl onto another surface. One of the issues I had early on in my first cut were sharp corners were peeling off the, the vinyl backer, and that was especially pronounced on the letter N. So here I'm going to show you how to apply a small radius to make those corners less sharp. First thing I'm going to do is apply an outside offset, then apply an inside offset, 
and the end result will be a radius applied to those sharp corners. So I'm going to do a test strip here with a radius of 0, a radius of 0.25 millimeters, 0.5 and 0.75 millimeters, and we'll see how cleanly each of the four samples cuts out. So again, we're going to select our text, we're going to click the offset tool, we're going to offset the outside by 0.75 millimeters, and then we're going to immediately click the offset tool again and do an inside offset of 0.75. And now we can delete the instances of the letters that we don't need. So first step is the 0.75 millimeter offset. And this one seems to have cut pretty clean. This is the 0.5 millimeter offset. And it looks like we had a little bit of lifting, but no tearing. This is the 0.25, and it looks like that's getting pretty torn up. And the zero millimeter offset looks like it's even worse. So going from 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.75. It seems like 0.75 is the minimum I would go. Well, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you got some good information out of this video. There are some other software packages and G-code modifiers that will compensate for the turning radius of the, of the knife and maybe give you better cuts, but it doesn't seem like you really need it. Anyway, if you have any tips, feel free to leave them in the comments, and thank you again for watching.